Um, hi, I'm Jenny Shampo. We um, are so lucky to have a number of the contributors to this book, both artists and authors here. So can I ask if you wrote um, a chapter or had a piece in the art, uh, in the book, a piece of art, can you stand so we can recognize you? <laughs> So Jay Kirk Richards, Rose Day Tugdahl, Rosalind Welt, Terrell Gibbons, Sarah Winninger, did I forget anyone? Megan. Oh, Megan. Uh, oh wait, no, that's not Sarah. I meant to say Megan. <laughs> Megan, no Black Island. Thank you. Um, okay, you ready for the fun part? We're going to talk about some art now. <laughs> um, Lehi's dream is actually the most depicted moment in all of Book of Mormon art. I had a hunch that this was true when I started researching it. Um, and thanks to the work in the Book of Mormon art catalog, we've, um, we found out that actually is true. Um, it is depicted the most frequently. Um, but what's interesting is that Lehi's dream is a vision. So it's not really a historical moment, um, which makes it difficult to depict artistically, but also um, gives artists a lot of opportunities to be creative in their depictions because it is a vision. And it comes to us um, through this series of translators. So we have Lehi that sees the dream in his mind as images, and he uses words to explain those images to his family. Nephi writes those down um, in Reformed Egyptian. <laughs> um, and then uh, Joseph Smith translates them um, in whatever process that translation took place. And then we come to it as readers with our own um, experiences and cultural context. So it's a, it's interesting that it, it goes through all these layers. I think it gives it so much potential. Um, but what's interesting is when you start looking at Lehi's dream art, it tends to always follow similar patterns. So even though there's so much of it, more than 250 images based on Lehi's dream, a lot of it looks very similar. Um, and I noticed that there were certain um, approaches to depicting it that um, seems like they might be useful that really weren't represented very well in the art. Oh, my little slide clicker wasn't working very well. Sorry. Oh, hang on. I might have to just, I'll just do the buttons maybe. No, it doesn't want to do that. Oh, help, Porter. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Okay. All right. I've got it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so most Lehi's dream art um, does not consider the order of events as Lehi relates them. So if you read 1 Nephi 8, um, it doesn't all happen at once. Lehi goes through these different moments. Um, things unfold over the course of the chapter. A lot of the art tends to compress it all into one moment. So that's not really how the scriptures describe what happened. Um, a lot of the art doesn't really... Um, explore the implications of um, and possibilities for this visionary scripture, like I was talking about. Uh, even though so much of Lehi's retelling of the dream is focused on his concern for his family and his sons, um, very little of the art um, emphasizes that familial aspect. Um, also, this is one of the only moments in the Book of Mormon where we have a named woman that's an active participant in the scene, Sariah, and um, and yet a lot of the art doesn't include her um, or, or feature her very prominently. There are a few important exceptions there, but um, seems like an opportunity to um, think about the role of women there more. Uh, we were talking about the dark and dreary waste. So before Lehi gets to the tree, he has this harrowing journey through this dark and dreary waste. And it's only when he comes to the end of it and, uh, or, or at some point pleads to God for mercy that he finally sees the tree. Um, that's not a moment we talk about a lot, and it's not a moment that's depicted in the art very much. And I have to think there's maybe a correlation there. Um, and then finally, even though we know from Nephi's explanation that the, the, the dream is really all about uh, the love of God um, in the form of, of Christ and his condescension to come to earth, um, the Christ is very rarely depicted in these Tree of Life images. Um, a very quick history um, of Lehi's dream art. The earliest that we know of um, was done in 1874 by David Hiram Smith. Uh, he's the youngest son of Joseph Smith. 
<clears throat> so he never met Joseph Smith. He was born after Joseph was martyred. <clears throat> uh, David Hiram Smith became a leader in, um, in a, a, a branch, a restoration branch that's now called the Community of Christ. So that's where this painting is today. Uh, probably as um, if you're a member of the church, a lot of the art we're familiar with, again, is this kind of panoramic view where all the symbols and elements are compressed into one scene. This painting by Stephen Neal is an enormous um, canvas, uh, and, and it does that, right? So you have Lehi in the bottom left corner sleeping, and then this giant landscape uh, unfolds behind him. Um, with all the things you'd expect, right? The spacious building and the iron rod and the tree and, and the river and the mist um, and the fruit and the path and the field. Um, the, this tended to be how most of the art was done in the 1980s and 90s, where there was this real moment of explosion of Book of Mormon art and, and really LDS art in general. Um, a lot of it was this kind of narrative and figurative approach. And then in the um, 1990s, we started to see a few more symbolic approaches. So paintings or sculptures that just focus on the tree or the iron rod. Um, and then also some images that universalize the experience. So not putting Lehi and his family in anymore, but more thinking about how the dream might be relatable to, to all of us. <clears throat> Um, I will say, I think the, the panoramic approach, like the Stephen Neal, or these symbolic approaches, like um, this one of the Tree of Life here, um, were used repeatedly and almost exclusively in church media, and that's still true today, and has been for a while. And I think because of that, it's helped fortify this, this um, preferred approach in most art. But there's also some really cool um, international approaches to this moment. And with thanks to the Church History Museum curators who've done so much good work over the past 40 years to encourage this kind of um, international art and to bring it into the Church History Museum collection. Um, here, these are four pieces, um, all based on Tree of Life. Um, the first is from Peru. It's a really fun little wooden box that opens in a traditional Peruvian uh, retablo uh, style. And then um, up top from Sierra Leone, it's a um, kind of a, a pieced fabric, um, a Diné Navajo um, sandstone carving. Um, and then from Taiwan, a, a more traditional sort of uh, landscape with a little tree of life there by the bridge. Um, so, so in this book, we wanted to think about um, kind of opening up the possibilities of ways to think about Lehi's dream artistically. And so we first gathered a group of artists and we wanted to have a group of artists that was diverse in culture and nationality and stylistic approach and in gender. Um, I'm so pleased to say that everyone we approached was thrilled to jump on board the project and uh, I just really enjoyed working with all the artists. Uh, we sent the artists summaries of the essays in the book. So the essays were written first. We sent them the essays and a little summary of each essay just to try to um, spur some, you know, some new thoughts there. And I think trying to open up some channels between artists and scholars that, um, that, that don't really exist very well. But I think that's one, one um, project this book was hoping to accomplish is to start to um, form these bridges between artists and scholarly communities more. Um, I, I was just so happy to work with the artists as they thought through these um, essays and their art. Um, some of the artists would call me and want to talk through their process or would send me snapshots of their draft um, paintings and uh, it, was, it was really rewarding to get to work on that together. And then once we got the art, we didn't actually assign artists to specific chapters, but um, we noticed that they did really fortuitously um, have these beautiful connections between artworks and the essays. So we matched those carefully in the placement in the book to try to draw those connections. Okay, I wanted to, the artworks are all out in the gallery right outside, so I hope you'll take a minute to look if you haven't already. Um, it's really fun to see them in person and to see them in conversation with each other there in the gallery. 
Um, but just quickly, I want to just run through these nine artworks. Um, so J. Kirk Richards, uh, pulling up the iron rod. Uh, we put this on the cover of the book because we thought it so well represented our project of this idea of needing each person needing to wrestle with the word of God, that it takes work, that you're not just holding on the rod, but he's, he's lifting it, he's having to work at it. And it's an individual effort, but also a communal effort as they work together. Rose de Tactile, um, really tapped into this familial aspect of the dream and the sorrow that Lehi feels as Laman and Lemuel refuse to partake of the fruit. And he's standing there at the tree trying to offer it to them, but you just see them, their feet walking away. Uh, I think Rose's um, really skillful perspective and use of color here adds to this sense of loss and grief. Um, Megan Geilman did this really fun um, photographic print. She arranges collages with a lot of symbols and then photo has them photographed. Uh, she based this work on um, a Salvador Dali painting um, called The Accommodations of Desire. And so she called this Adaptations of Desire. Um, and if you, look at, if you look up the Dali piece, the composition is similar, but she's changed all the symbols to, to relate more to Latter-day Saint history. So we have a little bonsai tree, that's the tree of life, um, some white ceramic figs, um, relating to Christ, Megan, yeah? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, uh, a seer stone, a clear stone, maybe references to brother of Jared. Um, the lion references to Ashira, which in some you know uh, iconographies, uh, relates to the tree of life. Um, I, I really like that she was pushing into that surrealist and visionary aspect of the dream that hasn't been explored very much. Uh, Sarah Winninger did a print. Um, I, I think this piece is really incredible because it reimagines the iron rod um, as, as people instead of an, um, metal. And, and it's also, it's circular, uh, it's infinite, and it's feminine. These are women, um, well, Christ, Christ at the top, and then women and children um, in this circle, uh, caring for each other, sharing food, tending babies. Um, and Sarah's idea is that um, it's these relationships we have to each other that, that bring us to God. Hildebrando de Mello is from Angola. Um, he primarily does very abstract work, and I was surprised actually that um, his pieces were as figurative as they are, um, but he still, you know, obviously has done some abstraction here, and he really invites the viewer to participate in the experience of creating this artwork. Um, one way he does that is by the three separate canvases that you'll see out in the gallery too. I, I hope you'll go experience it and stand in front of it. Um, you know, you'll, you'll want to look and compare between the three similarities and differences. And um, he also used unexpected colors, and that allows the viewer to sort of think about that um, or maybe even replace green for blue um, uh, or red <laughs> um, so that the viewer becomes part of the creator of the piece. I also, I also feel like I like the sense of sort of movement and transformation here, which is such a central theme of, of Lehigh's dream. Caitlin Conley did a very nice little pencil sketch, again, capturing this duality of, of the sense of loss, um, but also the sense of community, community and hope there. Um, that's Lehigh and Soraya in the middle. Um, Jose de Faria is from Portugal and uh, Gosh, I mean, I just, this piece is so visually um, stunning. <laughs> and again, getting into this visionary aspect of it, um, a little bit surrealist, uh, space and proportion feels a little off and um, it, it draws you in. Um, I love the way he's um, imagined the tree of life here as this white sort of um, mandorla shaped tree. I mean, mandorla in art history, it's in, uh, you know, in, in um, Medieval European art was used a lot um, as a reference to Christ and his divinity. Um, Annie Poon. Annie Poon is up in New York. 
Um, she is a really fun artist. She's doing really interesting stuff with the Book of Mormon. Um, and she focused on Lehi's experience in the dark and dreary waste. So I've never seen anything like this, right? To, like Lehi's dream, but I feel like it really captures this visceral, physical experience that Lehi had going through this dark waste, maybe hearing noises, maybe feeling scared of not being able to see things and struggling. And, you know, she put these giant button eyes on this little clay figure she made to show how he's straining to see. Um, I, I think um, really interesting. And then finally, Kathleen Peterson, um, who also focused on the familial aspect here with a father and son. And you see this really dynamic interplay between their faces and their hands as, as Lehi tries to reach out to them. Um, so uh, I feel like I, I'm just, I'm really pleased with how the art came together. Um, and I feel like it really testified to me of um, the, the power of, of using art as um, a study aid in reading the scriptures that we can draw on the uh, testimonies and, and revelation that the artists have experienced in the art and then bring our own um, experiences to that as well to receive new insights. One of the purposes of art is to help us um, think about new perspectives and um, to give us that little spark of the the unfamiliar that makes us kind of question what we thought we knew and and think again and and sends us back to the scriptures to learn um, learn it all over again and uh, just like the essays in this book do theological work um, I really see theological work being done with this art as well um, and I'm so thankful that I had the opportunity to work on it thank you